Hi, I'm Patricia with Buzz and Bark Animal Reiki, or Buzz and Bark Animals. And I want to talk about some things that most dog owners don't want to um, talk about. And this is from an animal commuter, communicator's perspective. And one of them is, don't smoke around your dog. Just don't smoke around your dog. I don't care what kind of substances. Don't vape. Don't smoke. Don't do marijuana. Don't do any of those things around your dog or any of your pets because it's very damaging to um, their lungs. And they're also worried about you. They're worried about your health. They're worried about your self-care. Because a lot of times when people smoke, it's a smoke screen. So it's like a mask, or if it's not that, it, they do it to relax. And a better approach to relaxing actually is doing breathing work, you know, breath work, yoga, meditation. Chanting would be a better way of being able to get that air through your body, which will bring you relaxing. Because I think what happens when people smoke, and the reason it's so relaxing, other than the chemicals in the cigarettes, is they're inhaling and they're exhaling so they're breathing in deep and then they're breathing out right and when we breathe in and breathe out we're relaxing our nervous system and so if the smokers were to do meditation and do breath work and to study those things while also getting off the the nicotine and then they're going to do themselves a favor but they're really going to do their pets a favor because the pets are exposed to this they're exposed to the secondhand smoke within the environment and say the person smokes in their home, they're gone, they leave for the day, the house is full of smoke, uh, the animals are breathing this in all day and whatever other chemicals that are in the carpet and all these other things and it's really unhealthy for them. And I saw this uh, woman and she was, she had a, a, a Frenchie, you know, one of those French bulldogs. And French Bulldogs are one of the short-faced dogs, right? So they've been having, because of the breeding and different things, and probably even before that, they have a lot of breathing difficulties. So this includes the Pug, the French Bulldog, the English Bulldog, the Boston Terrier, um, a lot of, you know, the Boxer, a lot of those dogs with the, the more smashed-in faces. Um, they've had a lot of breathing difficulties, and a lot of them end up with respiratory problems, and they have to go have surgery, um, very expensive surgeries. And, or they die, right? So this dog was trying, he was all the way on the end of the leash, just pulling away from this woman. And she was sitting on a bench and she was smoking and I can't help but get angry about this, right? I, and I, I think I may have said something to the woman or something. I mean, I was trying not to be mean, you know, cause maybe she's addicted and she's, or maybe she's got some trouble in her life or whatever. But that poor dog was communicating to me through its body language and also telepathically that it wanted its person to stop smoking, that it was miserable. Like it was having to have respiratory problems because it had this smashed up face, but then also having to breathe in that smoke. Now, granted, the dog was outside, but what if this woman also smoked indoors and then left for the day, and then the dog is at home having to breathe in secondhand smoke? Now, I'm a human who's allergic to secondhand smoke, and I've had some really severe illnesses um, because of it. I'm better now, but when I was in my 20s, I was having bloody noses. My lungs were full of just, well, you know, crap. Um, I had a bad cough, and I wasn't the one smoking. But this is back when people smoked in apartment buildings. They smoked in the workplace. They smoked in the bars where I played music. Um, and it was really irritating. It can cause like respiratory, a lot of respiratory problems it can cause lung cancer. Now, I don't know exactly uh, how it affects animals directly. I don't know how much it shortens their lives. I don't know if they, they're more likely to get lung cancer, probably are. I'm not sure exactly what the equivalent is for that, but I know that dogs are miserable around that. Um, and, and again, they worry about their person because in the dog's perspective and also a cat's perspective, if that person were to die, then who's going to feed the dog? Who's going, you know, there's a very codependent relationship that animals have with us. Like if we're, if something happens to us, what is going to happen to them? Their, their whole survival is tied in with us. So that's why they get a little bit of, you know, like they start getting separation anxiety if somebody's usually home at six and then they come home at eight. 
and they they're thinking in their mental process that something must have happened to their person right? not only are they hungry but now they're scared because they fear the worst like oh we don't have any food and if this person doesn't come back we're going to starve right so there is this sort of existentialist but also this danger um and then we do have a codependent relationship, whether that's healthy or not. We have codependent relationships with our pets because they are dependent on us. They can't go out and work and, and have a bank account and go buy their own food, right? And, and they're in a home, the house all day and we go off and do whatever we're doing, work or whatever it is. And then we come home with the food, right? We come home with whatever it is that they trust us that we're going to come back and that they're going to be taken care of. But when they start worrying, because we have a bad habit, and it could be smoking, could be drinking, could be, you know, the person comes home drunk, or could be a domestic violence situation. I mean, they're exposed to all these things. And what people don't realize is they have thoughts and feelings about these things, you know, and when a communicator comes in and they start um, having their telepathic conversations and going into their trance and everything else, these animals spill the beans, you know, they'll give details. And, you know, and maybe the, those are very private details, but they'll show the animal communicator what they've seen from their perspective. And they want the, the pack to get along with each other. They want to know that, you know, that someone's not going to die because of something that they're doing or that they're not going to get sick. And so it's weird like how many people still smoke around well they smoke around their children too which is kind of um you know nerve-wracking um but and then you gotta kind of wonder like why do they have pets in the first place i mean is it all about them you know i mean do they really want to care about this pet do they care about the health of this pet or is it just all about them having this acquisition of having a pet you know for their own for their own benefit, you know, because that does exist. I mean, you see it a lot where people got a designer dog. I used to see it in Seattle all the time around Green Lake. You know, you see all the designer purebred dogs and they're all out like out for walks around the lake. And um, a lot of times the people were just on their phones or they were just, you know, being you know, trendy clothes and their trendy dog. And, you know, and you got to wonder like how much of that is ego and how much of that is love? Like, do they really love their dog? Or do they just love having a dog? Is it that they fit in with a group now? They can go to the dog park and have a dog. Or do they go to the dog bakery? Or they can do all these things because they now have a dog. Or it could be a cat person. Although I didn't really see this with cat people. I saw this with dog people. And I'm not trying to be real critical, but the thing is, is a dog is a sentient being. I mean, all things are sentient beings. And they have thoughts and feelings. They have beliefs. They have their ways of navigating the world. And when they hook up with a human companion, they that's their pack. That's their that's their their group, right? And that's their survival. But they can become really bored when they're left to their own devices. And they have expectations of what they, you know, want from us. You know, they want food, they want water, they want to go for walks with their dog, or, you know, they just want, you know, you to play with them, if, you know, whether they're a dog or a cat or whatever animal it is. They have certain expectations that they want from us. And if we don't fulfill that, then what we end up with is a missing cat, a missing dog, an animal that dies young, uh, because they get really depressed or are uh, they just looking for a way out and that's really sad because you know there's this opportunity to have this interspecies relationship which is magical we can learn so much from other creatures and we can see ourselves reflected in them and we can change our lives you know so the lady you know the smoker or whatever maybe this dog is new in her life or maybe it's not even her dog Maybe it's her mother's dog and her mom said, go walk my dog. I mean, I don't even know if it was her dog or not, right? I don't know the story, but I know that when I was walking past this dog, it was asking me to ask the lady to not smoke and I can't do that, right? 
So I just kept walking, but that dog just looked at me as I was walking away and it was like, he was like pleading for like some help, but it wasn't doing it through barking or whining. It was, it was kind of a body language, but it was also these images that I was getting, these feelings that I was getting from this dog. And I do see this a lot. You know, people, they're walking their dog and their cigarettes down here, like right next, you know, just right above the dog's head or right next to the dog's head. Um, I don't know if I were a dog, I would not find that enjoyable. I mean, I really would not want to be breathing in that smoke while I'm out exercising and, you know, trying to get air into my lungs. Cause you know, when you exercise, your heart rate goes up and you're, you know, you're breathing more quickly. And so they're, they're taking in even more of this than if they were just sleeping or maybe not sleeping is a good example, but if they were just sitting and looking out the window, you know, their heartbeat's not going to be as fast. And, you know, so that's just my concern. And then the other concern I have, and I've had this one for a long time because I dealt with an overweight dog, is I went to a pet expo uh, last fall in here in Pittsburgh, and I would say about mm, half of those dogs were overweight, and some of them were severely overweight. And these were a lot of pure breeds. You know, some of them you know, were mixed breeds, but I would say that more of the pure breeds were overweight. And they tend to be more of the cuter dogs, you know, the ones that are good at begging. But we have to be disciplined as humans. You know, we can't just give in to, um, you know, spoiling the dogs with food. I wouldn't be surprised if they were getting table scraps. And, you know, some of the foods that we eat are not safe for dogs, not safe for cats. I, I know cats beg for food, too. It's not just dogs. I mean, cats will come up to the table and kind of try to get off your plate as well. So... But we always think of the dogs, you know, sitting there drooling and begging. Um, you know, feed your dog what's appropriate for them. Feed them the appropriate amount. Um, don't worry that they're not getting... I mean, my dad, he thought the dog was starving. I mean, the dog's like 50 pounds overweight. He's just big ballooning of a dog. Um, having heart issues and all this other stuff because he was overweight. And my dad thought the dog was starving, so he gave him ice cream and he gave him all this crap. And it was just really embarrassing that my own family members would do that. But he wasn't the only family member. Everybody would go, oh, he's hungry, and they would give him stuff, right? Well, the dog didn't need that much food, right? And he wasn't getting that much exercise, and he was getting older, and he had been fixed. So he had all these things working against him. Um, he did try to lose weight. I remember taking him for walks, and I put him on a diet and stuff. He was trying. Like, he really was trying. He was a tourist dog, so he was very hedonistic. He loved food. But I got the sense that he really wanted to lose weight, and only because I wanted to lose weight. He was probably trying to please me. But he started losing, he started dropping the pounds, right? And then I had some injury to my thumbs, and I couldn't walk him for a while, and he gained it all back, you know, because I could not get cooperation at the time from my dad to just leave the dog alone and stop feeding him. Because a lot of people bond through food. So the way that they bond through their pets is feeding them. But there are better ways to bond with your pet. Play, intellectual stimulation, going for dogs, going for walks, you know, going to some beautiful places and just taking it in with them, um, finding out what pleases them and giving them more of it, maybe buy them a new toy. Or, you know, if you're going to feed them a treat, put it in one of those Kong toys where it takes them forever to get it out of there. You know, at least they're kind of exercising, trying to get it out and you know, their minds occupied, um, you guys are trying to figure out a puzzle. So they're getting a little bit of brain stimulation, you know, um, those are, those are better ways to, um, to help your dog. I mean, cause I, I've seen a lot of overweight beagles cause apparently beagles can get into cabinets and they're really good food stealers. And so you gotta be, you gotta put locks on your cabinets. You gotta make sure your garbage, they can't get in your garbage. Um, you know, you have to be really vigilant with some breeds and beagles, one of them. And I would say German short hair pointers too, because if you leave food on the counter, they'll get it off the counter and they'll eat it. Now, Sabaka never did that as far as I know. Um, but I've seen videos of German short hair pointers stealing the food off the counters and, um, they're supposed to be a thin breed. They're not as thin as a greyhound, but they're a thin breed. And the Weimar Reimer is supposed to be thin. And there's a lot of dogs that are supposed to be that sleek, thin look, and they're not starving. If you can see their ribs, 
I mean, you don't want to see too much of the ribs, but you, you see a little bit of the ribs. And, you know, you go past your vet and you, and you say, hey, is this the right weight for my dog? And generally they'll give, you know, depending on the dimensions of the dog, they'll say this is the weight that this dog should be. You don't want the dog to be severely underweight because they're starving and you don't want them to be overweight because they can die from that. You know, they can even um, step wrong off a curb and because of the extra weight, they can like break a bone or sprain a, sprain a tendon. And then, you know, you've got a dog that's not able to walk, right? And now you're really in trouble because if the dog can't walk anymore or has to rest, then they're going to gain even more weight. And so that's what I wanted to say about those things, because I think most people love their animals and want the best for their animals, but they may not know that their habits are affecting their animals on such a deep level. So like say the, the woman is smoking and this dog be very concerned about her because it's a survival thing, but also he cares, you know, like I'm, I'm just using this as an example because I don't really um, know their relationships, but just, just say as an example, this dog cares about his person, does not want his person to get sick and die. Um, he doesn't want to be destitute, doesn't want to be abandoned, does not want to end up in a shelter. And they do know about shelters. All dogs seem to know about it. Even Sabaka, like my mom said, she wanted to take him to the shelter. He knew what that was, even though he'd never been to a shelter because he went under the table and he started shaking really hard and, and, you know, and he was really unconsolable. And because they know, because when we're talking, this is how we communicate telepathically. We're all communicating telepathically with our animals 24 seven. So when you're talking, you actually have an image going on right here in this, this area we call the third eye. So you may not be aware that when you're talking, you're visualizing because we do it at the same time and we're more focused, you know, most of us are focused on our voice. We're focused on the audio and the conversation that we're having back and forth with someone else. And we're not necessarily seeing the images from the other person, but eventually we will because that's telepathy and we're developing those abilities. That's why you see so many animal communicators now. It used to be that maybe there were one or two and now there's tons of them. It's because they learned how to communicate telepathically or they already knew how to do that. So there are humans that are already practicing that. I'm one of them. So when you are talking to somebody or you're talking to the pet directly, you're sending them visual cues. You're, you're saying, we're gonna to go to the beach, but you're dread, right? Because you're thinking of the vet. And so now this animals, these animals are seeing the vet. You're saying beach, but they're seeing the image of the vet. And then they start shaking and kind of running under the couch and you don't go, oh, what's wrong? We're going to the beach. And then they know they're not going to the beach because your visual image is the opposite of what you're saying. So now you're being dishonest with your pet and they know you're being dishonest with them. You're gaslighting them and you're doing it. Maybe you think it's funny and it kind of is, but it isn't. Um, they're not going to trust you now because you're telling them one thing and you're visualizing something else and your body language is dreading taking them to the vet and you're trying to trick them and say they're going to the beach. Now, maybe you can take them to the beach after you go to the vet, and then you're not lying because you took them to both places. But anyways, that's kind of how their minds work. And if we have bad habits, it does, it does concern them. Um, and we kind of need to be able to be on their level too. Like we need to see the world through their eyes. We need to be able, if we want to bond, I mean, not everybody wants to bond with their pets, but if you're one of the people that wants to bond with your pets, you got to start looking at your behaviors, you know, or do you swear a lot? Do you shout a lot? Do you slam doors a lot? Do you um, come home and crank the television, crank the stereo? I mean, all of these things are sense. I mean, are disturbing to a sensitive animal and animals are all sensitive. Every single one of them is sensitive. And, you know, once you start seeing your behaviors, you know, because you might go, oh, you know, you take your dog to the vet. I don't know why my dog's trembling all the time. He must have anxiety. I don't know why. I, don't, I have no idea. Well, then you get a journal out and you go through your own behaviors and you're very honest with yourself and go, okay, this is my routine. This is what I do in the morning. This is what I do in the afternoon. This is what I do in the evening. And yes, I do have the TV on really loud or maybe I'm listening to music really loud or maybe I'm having just this loud phone conversation for hours or whatever it is. So once you start looking at your behaviors and then you start looking at their world and maybe you go and get a book on the animal behavior for your particular pet or breed or whatever it is, 
And then you start putting it all together and then you can make changes so that they're comfortable around you, right? Because again, you have a codependent relationship. They're going to be passive aggressive if they need to get food from you, but they're mad at you. So, you know, they make a sulk all day, you know, because you did something that upset them. But then when it's food time, they're going to come and be all lovey-dovey. So they're going to do that passive aggressive dance with you because it's a survival thing. And it's the way that abused children are, right? Because abused children know, okay, well, I need to get food from my parents. I need to be taken care of by my parents, but they're also abusing me. So then they get kind of tricky and how they have to handle that. And, they, and then this whole codependent relationship develops. Well, it's the same with our pets. So whatever addictions we have, whatever um, bad habits we have, our pets are affected by it. So if there's any motivation to change those bad habits, we all have them. Just think of it from your pet's perspective and it will be easier to change those behaviors. Okay, I try to keep these under 30 minutes, so I'm going to end this one. I'm going to do a bunch of shorts. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what, what shorts I'm going to do. And I haven't done videos in a long time. It's been, um, I've been six months without a home. I finally got a rental, um, which you can see behind me. Uh, it took a long time. And um, I'm back and I will be bringing the card readings back, and especially if you enjoyed those. And I'm tell your friends about this channel. Like, just, you know, spread the word. I think there's like 24 people right here subscribing. But if you told three people and they all joined, then that would be 75, you know, people. And if they all told, you know, like it, it would just grow this channel. And then this information can get out to more people. And then if you have any ideas for videos, because sometimes I have no ideas. I don't even know what to do next. But if you're inspired by some idea and you want me to make a video on it, just let me know in the comments or email me um, and I'll do it. Because um, any concerns that you have with your pet or and you want more Reiki, my remote Reiki, would you want, you know, like, um, I would love to do like live things in the future too, where I'm, I don't know how you do it because I don't know how to make a Zoom and then turn it into a video. I've not learned how to do that. But if there's a way to do a live thing, maybe with a chat and somebody could have their pet and, or, or maybe somebody can send me their pet's information ahead of time and then I could just do a, a live thing or or not a live thing, but maybe I can just do a video on, you know, with just using a photograph and, you know, something like that where I could give a sample type thing, like a, 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 um, a mini reading is what I call them. Um, you know, something like that would just make this channel more exciting. Um, you know, whatever, you know, if you have any other ideas, let me know. And thank you for being here and have a wonderful week with you and your pet bonding.